Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week of our Cybersecurity Executive Brief. I am Corey Wolf, Director of Offensive Security at Risk360, and today is Wednesday, October 16th. And the day that we have all feared has come, uh, quantum computing is here, and it is breaking encryption. So news this week, which uh, many of us have been talking about for quite some time now, uh, its effects on cybersecurity, its effects on encryption and privacy, uh, and one of the, the, the biggest things that we were concerned about is uh, quantum computing being used to break our current uh, encryption algorithms. This is something that's been top of mind ever since quantum computing started to take, uh, really take flight. And the fact is that, you know, quantum computing is just such an, it's a whole another level of computing power. And that uh, at some point, quantum computers would be able to break encryption algorithms. Uh, that day has come. Uh, so researchers uh, from Shanghai University, so Wang Chao was uh, the lead researcher's name, in fact, did this. So they were able to break RSA encryption using a quantum computer. Uh, they also went on to uh, break, uh, I believe, AES as well. Yep, so the researchers didn't stop at RSA. They also attacked algorithms crucial to the advanced encryption standards including pre present, sorry, rectangle and the GIFT-64 block cipher. So this means that using the quantum computer, these researchers were able to break that encryption algorithm. So yeah, uh, that's some pretty big news. Uh, NIST has been you know, working through, they, I, I believe in August of this year, they actually released the first three uh, quantum safe uh, encryption algorithms for quite some time now, NIST, and I believe they did this with uh, AES too, uh, they had a, um, a competition really, I believe, to start to come up with proposals for uh, encryption algorithms that could work in a post-quantum world, right? So they, this has been going on five, six, maybe 10 years, I don't know exactly, but for quite some time, this has been working towards post-quantum cryptography. Uh, and in August of this year, they actually did release their first three finalized post-quantum encryption standards. So interesting timing, uh, August 2024, NIST releases their first three post-quantum standards uh, for encryption. And uh, this week, which I believe it was October 14th, uh, researchers in uh, the Chinese, user, Ch Chinese University uh, of Shanghai University, University uh, released that they have actually use quantum computing to break the RSA and AES encryption uh, uh, methods. So this is just a start. Uh, they do say, so this might seem a little, if you're not really sure what's going on here. So published in the Chinese Journal of Computers under the title, Quantum Annealing Public, Public Key Cryptography Attack Algorithm Based on D-Wave Advantage. So D-Wave is an organization, I believe, based in Canada that produces quantum computers. Uh, you, I'm sure you've probably heard of the IBM. Google has a quantum computer uh, that they've been working on. D-Wave is another one of these organizations that has been working on quantum computing for, for quite some time now, uh, at least 10 years. Uh, they're based, again, I believe, in Canada. Uh, D-Wave is the name of the organization, and Advantage is their new quantum computing platform. So this is pretty new technology. Uh, and the other thing I want to call out is that the way that D-Wave does uh, the, the quantum computing is what's called annealing. So I'm not going to get into it because quite honestly, it's above my pay grade. Uh, but uh, what you need to know is that traditional computers work basically logic gate functionality. And so that's what, when you see IBM and Google working through quantum computing, they're trying to, you know, kind of replicate that same type of, um, of, of function, right? So logic-based computing, which has its value absolutely 100%. Annealing is another method to do quantum computing, which is based on probability and quantum mechanics uh, and basically optimization, uh, I, I believe algorithms, again, uh, but optimization algorithms and or functions in quantum computing. Long story short, 
annealing is a different way than, than what we're probably used to seeing uh, from IBM and Google and all the other uh, players that are doing quantum computing and working towards quantum computing today. So this is a different method, uh, which is focused on optimization, which makes it so, you know, very good for breaking encryption algorithms. They went ahead and did it. Uh, so again, researchers based in China, the uh, quantum computer made by D-Wave, a company in Canada, on their new platform, uh, which they call Advantage. And so these researchers were able to break those encryption uh, mechanisms. One of the big things that we've in cybersecurity talked about often is that, yeah, we have SSL and it's, that's great that we moved towards SSL back in the day, right? It was just HTTP. You were sending credit card numbers and, and usernames and passwords through plain text, HTTP, no encryption. We had HTTPS and that was great. And we felt like, you know, that's a pretty good step forward. But once we started to really think about quantum computing and its implications, you know, we started to understand that, hey, the, this, this isn't going to matter once quantum computing comes out. And so while right now it's only happened in a lab, the thought process is that, you know, threat, threat actors and nation states really are just hoarding all this information. So, they, you know, they might be grabbing Internet traffic for the past decade and just storing it somewhere until quantum computing gets to a point to where they can decrypt it uh, and, and go through it. But basically break that HTTPS, that SSL connection, um, that SSL stored data, uh, break that with a quantum computer and go back to you know five, 10 years worth of data that they saved up and then go ahead and, and, and view that protected, you know, encrypted data, I should say. So yeah, it's the day is here. We've uh, been talking about it for quite some time. Kudos to NIST though, uh, you know, of course, knowing that, that this was going to be an issue, starting the process some time ago and uh, have released their first three finalized post-quantum encryption standards in just this August. So the day is here. Quantum computing is making leaps and bounds. AI is making leaps and bounds. The future is now. One other thing that I wanna to touch on, which this, this uh, came out probably about a week or so ago, uh, but Wired just wrote up a big uh, article on it, which has started to make the rounds. Uh, so I wanted to touch on this just a little bit, is that there is some uh, new malware going around for air gap systems. So for those of you that don't know, air gap systems simply mean that they are not connected to the internet, right? And they're not connected to an internal network either, right? So they're not connected to a network in any way, right? Um, and so the most famous one of these uh, where an air gap system was breached is, is uh, the operation called Stuxnet. If you're not familiar with Stuxnet, I highly suggest you read up on it. It's how U.S. and I believe Israeli, uh, you know, SIGINT agencies put a big dent in Iran's nuclear program. Uh, but air gap systems, so if you think, uh, you know, um, industrial plants, uh, critical infrastructure, they should all have air gap systems, you know, between IT, information technology, and OT, operational technology, things like in refineries, water treatment plants, that kind of thing. Those OT networks should be air gapped in some way. They shouldn't be connected to the open internet. And so when you get in nuclear facilities and high value targets and critical infrastructure, it's not uncommon for there to be many air gapped uh, systems throughout these different, um, different uh, industries and in, in, um, you know, critical infrastructure. So Stuxnet is the big, most po probably most popular one. Uh, this one uh, that, you know, the European Union has released information on. Uh, so uh, they talk, so they just released this information recently. Uh, this happened at least two times, one against the embassy of a South Asian country in Belarus in September 2019, and again in July of 2021, and another against the European government organization between May 2022 and March 2024. So these attacks are being... Uh, being executed by a group known as Golden Jackal. And they've been doing this for you know a few years now, at least since 2019, they've been working towards air gap systems. The thing about air gap systems is that most of the time when they're breached, 
uh, it's through uh, a, a USB drive. And that's what uh, Golden Jackal has been doing for quite some time. Uh, and so, you know, I'll link to this as well from this, the Bleeping Computer report, uh, um, write up rather. Uh, but this is what they've been doing for a very long time. In order to get to an air gap system, how else are you going to get into it, right? You need to actually connect to it. And so, you know, very often you see uh, it being done with USB sticks and you get some sort of insider from that facility to just plug this USB in and it runs. And this is classic like USB auto run attack type stuff. You know, you get an insider, you tell them, hey, take this USB, plug it into that air gap machine and it auto runs and does a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, Golden Jackal has lots of different uh, components of its malware. Uh, so you can see a, a, a portion of it's called Golden Dealer. Uh, and so uh, another portion of it, Golden Howl, which is a backdoor. Golden Robo, a file stealer. At the end of the day, all this time, they have a USB drive with a bunch of malware on it that when it's plugged into the air gap machine, it auto runs, it collects information, it you know finds valuable targets, does whatever it needs to do. And in the case of, of Golden Jackal, they would store it on a special part of the USB drive. Maybe it's unpartitioned or something. I'm not really sure how you would, I guess it would be on, I don't know. Maybe they're just writing straight byte code to it. But in one way or another, they would write this data to the USB drive uh, in a, in a area of the USB drive that it isn't very easy to observe. The big news is that they have a new modular tool set. So in 2022, Golden Jackal began using a new Go-based modular tool set that performed similar activities to those described in the previous section, what we just talked about. Uh, and this is a, a good move on their part. Uh, so it, previously, many of their tool sets were built with Python. Python is an interpreted language. And so that means that a couple of different things need to happen for, um, for it to run on the machine. The other thing about interpreted languages is that they are much slower and they um, take up a lot more memory. Go uh, actually compiles down to machine code for that specific platform, which means it runs much, runs, runs much faster, cleaner, and quicker, right? And, and with less memory, rather. And so the the real part about what's going around this past week or so in this air gapped uh, malware is that they've they've been doing it for quite some time. They've updated their tool set to focus on using Go. Uh, and then when you unplug the USB and you plug it into another internet connected device, it'll automatically take the information that it grabbed from that air gap machine and upload it. So in this case, they use Google Drive uh, to do that. Uh, piece of malware that they're calling Golden Drive. So, you know, it's making the news and that's that's great because it's creating awareness. People are starting to learn more about it, but this isn't anything new. What is new is their tool set, uh, but they've been doing it at least since 2019. Stuxnet, I don't even remember when that was. It was a long time ago. Uh, these types of activities have been going on forever. That USB auto run attack is something that we test all the time when we're doing physical penetration testing engagements. Uh, and uh, it's, no, it's nothing new. Uh, what is new is, is the way, is a piece of malware that they created to, uh, to pull this information and send it off to their C2 servers. Google Drive. Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, SharePoint, all of those are great places to exfil data because they're always going to be allowed out. They're always going to be allowed outbound, right? What organization is not going to let you connect to SharePoint uh, or OneDrive? or Google Drive. So that's it for this week. Uh, only two stories. I'll add all the, the posts or all the links to uh, everything that we talked about today. Quantum computing, jumping by leaps and bounds as is AI, uh, but uh, threat actors up to the same old tricks. Uh, I'm glad that it's getting attention. I'm not sure why it's making such a big deal right now, uh, but uh, these are classic attacks that ideally these critical infrastructure and air-gapped uh, systems should already be prepared for, you would hope, you would hope. Anyways, thanks again for joining me this week. I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we will see you here next Wednesday. Speak soon.